Let's prepare our hearts to listen, not to Pastor June, but to God. I've listened to God faithfully with this message. I actually, it was inspired, of course, by God Loves You Tour. It also inspired last Sunday where I attended the church anniversary. I also heard this passage in Acts 8. I also learned this passage last Tuesday at this at my lecture at Bible school. That's why I thank God you wanted me to preach about Acts 8, 26 to 40. And come on, let's prepare our hearts. Let's be expectant. Let's be aware of the presence of God. Let's be aware that the Spirit is moving right now. And let us just enjoy His Word. Father, thank You that You are here. You wanted us to hear your word. And so here we are, God. We want to hear you. God, remove any obstacles, anything, Lord, that might hinder us. May it be seen or may it be a discomfort in our bodies. May it be a, a worry, anxiety. May it be something, Lord, that is bothering us for already for a long time. Lord, right now, we would like to focus on your word. Lord, this is your will. This is your moment. And we would like God to embrace this particular moment that you have set for us. Your word will be preached. Your word will be heard. Let the gospel of truth illuminate our minds through the power of the Spirit in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You are called to share Jesus. If you still remember the other week, my preaching about in the same uh, line, which how to lead someone to Christ. So you know the trajectory of, my, of where I'm going, you know, where our church actually uh, gearing toward we are giving toward evangelism, witnessing, because this is the primary reason why we are constituted as a church. Because Jesus Christ manifesto, Jesus Christ's mission is to bring good news to the poor. And it is a very mission as well of the church because when God, Jesus, breathed on the disciples, he breathed them and they receive the Spirit. Why? Because God sent Jesus for a mission, and Jesus sent for us for a mission. At each and every one of us here, we are called for a mission. Not all of us here, not everyone in this church is called to be a pastor. Not everyone in this church is called to be a missionary. Not everyone in this church is called to be an apostle. Not everyone in this church is called to be a teacher. Every one of us, all of us here, we are all called to share Jesus. If you have the Spirit of God in you, which you receive when you got born again, you have this power in you that you could use, that you could rely on. On, upon in order for you to fulfill that calling of sharing Jesus, simply the gospel. I'll give you a little background of our text for, that, for this today, Acts 8, chapter, uh, Acts 8, verses 26 to 40. First, in Acts 1, 8, this very popular verse, which is, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea, in all Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Have you heard this? I know you've heard this passage so many times. This is the outline of the whole book of Acts. Book of Acts, some call it Acts of the Apostles, and some Acts of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit enabled the, the, the apostles to do their ministry in the, book, book, in the whole book of Acts, written by Luke, Dr. Luke. Okay? So this is the pattern. When Jesus Christ died and he resurrected and he's about to ascend to heaven, he gave this 
promise. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. For what? For you to become famous? For you to become powerful? For you to, become, to, for you to enjoy life? No. You have received the power because there is, it, comes responsi- it comes with responsibility. It is to witness, to share what? The good news, the gospel. Where? In Jerusalem. It started in Jerusalem because they were living in Jerusalem during that time. And because of their persecution, because of the, the newfound faith that they had, they were persecuted by the Jewish people because this is a new thing for them. They were persecuted and now they need to run for safety. They were dispersed. They were scattered. They started to move, move, move around and they went to Judea to Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The first part of the book of, book of Acts happened in Jerusalem because they were there and they were sharing the gospel about Jesus because that's their calling, because that, that, that's what that they've experienced and that's their witness. If you're going to, book, to read the book of Acts from Acts 1 to 8, no, 7, sorry, that's about sharing the gospel, the apostles sharing the gospel around Jerusalem. And because they were persecuted by the authorities, now they started to be dispersed. At the death of Stephen in Acts 7, now they started to move out from Jerusalem. They went to where? It says there, in Judea and Samaria. You know what? This event this hardship, this persecution that they've experienced, God even used it for his glory and for the good of the gospel and for the good of his people. They were persecuted and lo and behold, this is, God used it for, for the evangelization of the Samaritans and Gentiles and the people around the world. Imagine that, even the darkest moment of their life, God used it. For the benefit of many people, for them to hear the word of God. So now, at this juncture, in Acts 8, verses 5 to 8, they were now in Samaria. The gospel already spread in Samaria. This is the northern part of Israel. All right? Jerusalem in the southern part of Israel. But Samaria, they are at the top. The northern part of Israel. Someone's crying. <laughs> the dog, dog barking in Jesus' name. Yeah, Samaria, this is the place where Samaritans live. Okay, if you know your Old Testament, those Old Testament students here, Samaritans, you know them. They were, they were the, the, the children or the, the people who, who came from the intermarried intermarrying inter, inter, those people who intermarried with the Gentiles. Jewish intermarried with the Gentiles and their children were called us Samaritans. So there's the deep seated prejudice amounting to hatred toward one another. Jewish and Samaritan. Imagine Philip, a Jewish man, a Jewish guy, preaching the good news to his enemies. Samaritan. In Samaria, he found himself preaching the good news in order for them to be saved. It just tells us that God loves even your enemies. Even those people with different color, culture, preference. Philip went down the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. In verse 8, you know what it says there? So there, were, was, there was great joy in the city. Meaning to say, there was a revival. There was a tremendous outpouring of the Spirit in that place. And many people were get, they were, they get born again. And they found a Savior. There was a great evangelism ministry during that time so from jerusalem now in samaria in chapter 8 now 
We'll pick up from there. And now it says in, eight, in verse 26, the start of our uh, passage today. While there was this great evangelism ministry in Samaria, many people turned to God. This is what the angel of the Lord told Philip. Remember Philip? He was the one who was so passionate to invite his friend. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. They heard it, right? Did we read it, right? There was this great evangelist ministry going on in Samaria. Many people came to know the Lord. Philip had the time of his life. He's enjoying the ministry. Many people came to the Lord. Isn't that great when you see people, thousands, hundreds of people coming to the Lord? It's so exciting. It's so, it's so, it's, it, there's so much joy in you. This was the experience of Philip when he, he was in Samaria. And while he was enjoying it, the Spirit of the Lord, the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert of the road, uh, the, de the desert road goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Philip would have said, Not now, Lord, I'm enjoying this. Look at these people. They got healed, they got born again. They're following you. They're worshiping you. They are my enemies and now they turn to you, God. Not me, Lord. Send someone else. Send Noel. Or Julian. Or Marlon. Or not now, maybe next year. I'll enjoy this ministry. Some, some, send someone else, Lord. Not now, Lord. Not now. Or perhaps God, not there. Why desert road? There's so much discomfort there. A place of no return, perhaps. It is a difficult, dry land, isolated place. In the middle of nowhere, he would go there. Maybe you are comfortable right now with your job, with your ministry, and God speaks. Marshall, go to what? South Island. No, no. That's not a prophecy. No, you stay here. God has something for you in Auckland. Go south to the road, the desert road, uncomfortable place. God has something in mind there's nothing wrong with this mass evangelism thousands of people coming to know the lord through philip in samaria there's nothing wrong with god loves you tour it's okay but god is also very particular and is also looking for some individual Yes, God wants to see thousands of people coming to know the Lord. But God also wanted to see an individual coming to God. And this is what we're going to learn today. And you are called to share Jesus to that individual, to that person. You are called to share Jesus. You're not called to be a pastor. You're not called to be an evangelist who would go out there, but you are called to share the gospel to your family, to your relative, to your workplace, to your network, to your vocational network, to your recreational network, to your familial network, or what kind of network, social media network. You are called to share the gospel to them. We have our own networks. Your professional networks. Let's do this.
share the gospel with everyone. With everyone. Share the gospel with everyone. I'm not saying share the gospel to your favorite people. But share the gospel with everyone. As we continue reading from our passage today in Acts 8, 26 to 40. Let's pick up from there. 27. So he started out after the whole, after the angel told him to go to the desert road. He started out without any complaint, without any doubt, without any fear. And on this way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch. Perhaps many of you don't, don't know what's Ethiopian eunuch. We'll learn that today. An important official in charge of all the treasury of the Candace. If you have other translations, it would say it's Candace, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship. He was a God-fearing person. And on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. <gasps> he was a Gentile. He came from Ethiopia, meaning he's a Gentile. He's not a Jewish person. If you're not a Jew, you are a Gentile. If you're a Jew married to a Gentile, your, sibling, your, your children would be Samaritan. But this one from Ethiopia, I could surmise that he is a Gentile. All right? From here, it implies, it's explicitly written here that he is an important official. But it implies that he is influential, he is powerful, he is somebody, he is he's a busy person, if you have that kind of, of uh, role. Not only that, he is rich. Why? Because he, afford, he could afford to buy the scrolls of the book of Isaiah. You know what? The book there of Isaiah is not written in a, in a piece of paper. It's written in scrolls. It could have been like this. It's big scrolls. So it was written in scrolls. You see, it is expensive. He's rich. Even this kind of person, God loves him. God died for this person, a Gentile from Ethiopia. He's a busy person. He's, he is a rich person. As if he figured out how to live life. And yet, he still has, he still, he still has this, 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 this desire to know more. He didn't figure out completely, totally. He needed to know more. That's why he's trying to seek God. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet, he even bought it and bring it at, bring at home, bring it at home, or even gave it to the, the queen of Ethiopia. Maybe that's why the, the gospel was spread to Ethiopia because of this guy. You will never know who's ready for the gospel unless you try. Who could, tell, who could think that this, this man needs Jesus? He's rich, top official, in control of so many things. But you know, they were castrated, they were emasculated, they were incapacitated to, to pro, pro, procreate. Because, you know, the reason why they were castrated for them not to touch the queen because most eunuch during time they were serving the, the queens or the high ranking officials or, or, or women particularly so that if they're castrated they were incapacitated to, to procreate and to make babies so that the queen would be protected okay I don't know if he, he wanted, if, they had, if there's some vacuum on his life because of that need not to, not to, eat, not to be able to procreate. But eunuch, there are three types of eunuch. The one who is being forced to be a eunuch, 
who is called to be a eunuch, and one, and one is, uh, who, is, who, who was born as a eunuch because they, they have this uh, problem uh, making ba- procreating, or some are just, they wanted to become a eunuch. I don't know which one, uh, this eunuch. But the point is, he's a busy person, you may say to your boss, to your classmate. Or to your, he's a busy person. My boss, his, my manager, he's a busy person. I think he's, he's so mean, he's a bully person. He won't listen to me, right? He's evil, actually. He is my persecutor. He's prideful. He seemed so complete. He doesn't, any have, he doesn't have any regard to God. Why should I share the gospel to him? But still share the gospel to everyone. Oftentimes, we just got to try. Have the battle is just do it. Just show up and do what God says. Share the gospel. One way to exercise, to share the gospel to people that you are afraid of or maybe you are not comfortable sharing. We have an FB event, as I have mentioned a while ago. This praise and prayer night is coming, 11. Come on. First thing that you need to do, go to your FB event and then click going, the button, and then share it to your office mates. Who knows? That person needs a prayer. Ethiopian eunuch. Do you know Paul? He was a persecutor. He was instrumental in the persecution of Christians during the early first centuries. But he was turned to become an apostle. God used him. People, Christians, were, was, were scared of Paul. But he needed Jesus. He encountered Jesus. Who knows? There are, there are some Ethiopians out there waiting for me. Perhaps some, there, are, there, are, there are so many Pauls in your workplaces, in your schools, waiting for you. Okay? So, yeah, I'm not kidding. Every event, that's one way you could exercise sharing Jesus to them. Bringing them here on Sunday, on Friday, praying for them. Wow, what a wonderful way to share Jesus through prayer. Second, you are called to share with the, the gospel with the Spirit's leading. So let's continue reading. The Spirit told Philip, go to the chariot, stay near it. Then Philip ran after the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. I could just imagine right now. He could have, he could have jogged. He could have ran, you know, trying to, to chase the entourage of the eunuch. I could imagine camels, horses, you know, Soldiers around this important official. He's not an ordinary person who could ride just a single horse. He has an entourage. In our day and age, it could have been a limousine, bodyguards in black. Imagine the spirit that the Lord told Philip, go to the chariot, interrupt the entourage. Interrupt their trouble. My goodness. What an audacity. What a boldness. What a passion. What a a courage for Philip to do that. Why? Because of the Spirit's leading. Acts 1.8, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Imagine the boldness of Philip here. Just like chasing Trump or Hazinda Ardern. No, Hazinda Ardern could have been easier because, you know, 
uh, she is so uh, reachable. But imagine a person with authority. He would interrupt their trouble because of this. Then Philip ran to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. During the time, it's their culture to read something with a loud voice. They read aloud during the time. That's their culture. That's why in this instance, he heard him reading the book of Isaiah. You know what? God would arrange. God prearranged this meeting with this Ethiopian eunuch. He prearranged this. Imagine. At the right time, he read this eunuch, important official, reading the book of Isaiah. It's because of the Spirit's leading. When the Spirit leads you, when the, you receive a nudging from the Spirit, I'm really sure that when God initiates, He would orchestrate. He would orchestrate something that you would cannot, you cannot deny that God's hand is upon that. Yes. That's why you don't, you cannot just come up on something or do something or come to someone without the Spirit's leading, without praying for it. Philip saw an open door. What's the open door? He heard this Ethiopian eunuch reading the Isaiah. This is an open door. This is where I could come in. He knew that this guy, Ethiopian eunuch, is in need. Hey, as simple as, this, as asking questions such as, do you understand what you're reading? Simple question, right? Nothing harmful about that question. And what's the, what's the answer? How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. This eunuch, this ed, I believe he's educated cannot understand what he was reading. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. What an opportunity, an opportunity that we often miss because we don't show up, because we don't listen to the nudging of the Spirit. Though sometimes you're already experiencing the, the, the nudge of the Spirit, Convicting you to talk to that person, invite him, but because you are afraid, you are lazy, or I don't know, or what have you, you're missing this kind of opportunities. He was invited by the Ethiopian eunuch inside the chariot because of the Spirit's leading. But Philip didn't just say, repent and be baptized, or, or else you'll go to hell. Have you been baptized? Have you been born again? Do you pray? No, no, no. Simply. Do you understand? You know what? Sometimes you would sit with your boss at your cafeteria, your manager. That's an opportunity. Hmm. If you sit with your classmate, an opportunity is knocking. Your boss or manager might ask, how's your weekend? They normally, they usually ask that. How's your weekend? What's your answer? Simple. Not just say, answer, good, fine. Oh, we had a great time with my family and the church. What? Church? Tell me more about that church. That's an open door. Right? If you, find, if you see someone sick... That's an opportunity for you to pray. Who would say no to a prayer? If someone is grieving, right there and there, don't call your leader or your life group leader to pray for that person. You are called to share Jesus. Prayer is a powerful weapon to introduce people to Christ. As an, it's an open door. Right there in front of you, they are in need. 
if you don't know the answer to their questions, so let them know that you are responsible Christian and I'll get back to you for the right answer. And then Google it. Don't just Google it. Go to the right website or ask your life group leaders about the answer. That's an open door. Just be aware of God's leading in your life. The truth is the Holy Spirit resides in you, in us. Therefore, we have to be aware of the Spirit's leading in us, with us, for us, through us, to us, and around us. Because the Spirit is constantly doing something, constantly moving around us. And we Christians should cooperate. Let, let us be aware of that. And if you are aware of his move, then we can operate according to the gift that God has given us. Therefore, be sensitive with the move of the Spirit in your life. When you read the Bible, when you pray, when you listen to the Word of God right here at the moment that you are seated in your at, on that chair i believe god is speaking to you god already putting some people in your mind your neighbor your husband your wife your classmate your boss your manager your workmate or even your enemies god is already flashing it in your into your mind in order for you in order for you to be reminded that god loves them that god died for them I'm afraid. I don't want that. What if? Not now. Not there. Not me. Send someone else. I call my pastor or I'll call my life group leader to do the invitation for them. Not me. You're missing the joy of Christianity, my friend. Because sharing the gospel is a way of life. You know what? Someone some people out there, they're just waiting for us to invite them. How can they know unless someone explained it to them? How can they know it's no one would tell them? How would no one would turn up to you on your door? Can you please invite me? Because I've been seeing you for a long time. You are a good neighbor. Come, please invite me in your church. I don't think that is... Very, very, or highly possible. But yeah, sometimes, but I've been trying to be a good neighbor but for, for so many years now, but no one really dared to knock on my door and tell me, Pastor June or neighbor, can you please invite me? Because I saw you, you're good. You were, no. There was spirit leading yesterday. Well, I was outside our house, or Friday. I saw my neighbor. Bang. Lord, this is it. This is from you, Lord. You know what? Sometimes me, I'm also scared of inviting people. I could invite your friends, your families. I'm, I'm good at that. I'm easy. My neighbor, that's the hardest thing for me to invite. I don't know why. I could invite strangers. Talking, talking about his family, coming here in New Zealand, boom. You have something on the 19th of November? Oh, no, what, what's that? Oh, please wait, I'll get the push card. Please come, invite. I gave him maybe just 10 push cards, and he said he would share it to his uh, flatmates. Thank you, Lord. And now, God will do the rest. And I'll follow him up because he friended me in Facebook. All right. Share the gospel with the Spirit's leading. Without the Spirit's leading, come on, you might end up as a failure or disappointed. But oftentimes, I'm telling you, when you pray, Lord, give me an opportunity today, Lord. 
give me a divine appointment with my friend, with my boss, or even strangers at the park. Lead me, Holy Spirit. I want to be part of the evangelization of this world. I want to fulfill your mission, Lord. I want to live my life with purpose and meaning. Share the gospel of Jesus. All right, let's continue reading. This is the passage of Scripture the eunuch was reading. So this is the passage that the eunuch can't understand. There you go. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. Do you understand that? Well, there's so many eunuchs in this room because you don't understand this. No. Every passage or scripture or verse in the Bible it could actually lead to Jesus. In this particular verse or passage, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. That's Jesus Christ, the sheep. Sheep was offered a sacrifice offering. And as a lamb before a shearer is silent, he didn't open his mouth. So this is Jesus. This is the metaphor for Jesus. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants where his life was taken from the earth? So church, telling people who is Jesus was like the lamb. What he has done for us. The lamb was offered. The lamb, the lamb died for us, for all our sins. Let us not be caught up, caught up in telling other people, in evangelizing them what you should do for God. This is what you should do, that you, you should go to church, that you should pay your tithes, that you should uh, pray and fast, that you should come to church early. 10 to 2 every, yeah, that's good. Come to church early. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Do you think it's good to come to church maybe five minutes before two o'clock? It's good, right? Let's practice that. Yes, segue. That's a good, that's a good segue. <laughs> right. So let's not be caught up with that when we are trying to invite people or they will be turned off. But let us emphasize what God has done for us. He's a shift. He's a lamb that was offered. For the forgiveness of your sins. That's the gospel. What's the gospel? God has loved and God loves, God loves you. But people are sinners. God has a provision. He gave his son Jesus Christ. But people have to respond. That's what we've learned from the last preaching. Okay. So share the gospel of Jesus. Because Jesus is the center of the Bible. The whole Bible points to Jesus in one way or another. Therefore, always lead your message to Jesus. Point that person not to the pastor, not to the music of your church, not to your building, not to your life group, not the way you speak, not with your color, not with your... Culture, but point someone to Jesus, the gospel of Jesus, the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the gospel has the power to save. As they traveled along the road, we, are con we just continue reading this. They came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What we are going to read here, these are the marks of a saved person. I could tell that this eunuch was saved because of these marks. First, when he saw the water, he said, what can stand in the way of my being baptized? Wow, what a conversion, what a transformation, what a change of heart in front of many people around him, his servants, soldiers, he wanted to be baptized. 
What can stand away? What could stop me from being baptized in water? What could stop you? What could stop us from being baptized in the water? What? This eunuch, a high-ranking official, an important official, what can stand in the way of my being baptized? I could tell he, is a tran- he has this transformation. He has this conversion. If you are reading in NIV, you don't have verse 37. You want to check? Come on, check it. I just pinch it from King James Version. No verse, no, verse, no verse 37, sorry. I cannot explain to you here why there's no verse 37. Because it would take a long time. But trust me, some version doesn't have, don't have a verse 37. But it says here, Philip, if you believe with all your heart, you may. The eunuch answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Another mark of a saved or converted Christian regenerated person. He said, Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. You may be baptized. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then be baptized in the water. The eunuch answered, I believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Was converted. Why? Because of the power of the gospel, the name of Jesus Christ. Philip preached to him, shared to him the person of Jesus Christ. That's in our previous verse. And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Wow, their travel was interrupted. For him to be baptized in water. I think this for me is a good indication that he is really a transformed man. Willing to be disrupted. Willing to be interrupted. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. And this tells us that baptism is not sprinkling, but it is immersion. You have to be immersed in water in order for you to be baptized. Not just sprinkling. You have to be dunked in the water, in water baptism. Again, if you haven't baptized yet what stop you from being baptized and so get the picture here philip dank dank the eunuch or i don't know this one or that one or maybe this one and then when he went up where's philip where's philip <laughs> When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. He was teletransported to another place. How to explain that? Don't ask me. That's a miracle. Just like what happened in the Sea of Galilee. When they were there in the middle of the sea, all of a sudden, that boat suddenly went to the shore. There's a, there's a teletransportation in that manner. I don't know, but there's a miracle there. But what happened was, when they came out of water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again. But went on his way rejoicing. For me, this is a good mark of a transformed, converted, saved person. There's so much joy in our lives if we are saved by faith. His joy didn't depend on Philip, not on the pastor, not on your life group leader, not on your friends in the church. Your joy doesn't depend on them, not depend on the, how, I, how I preach. Oh, Pastor June, well, there was a great preaching on Sunday. I'm so joyful. No, it doesn't depend there. Wow, the music is so awesome. It really 
led me to raise my hand. Wow, the music, the lightings, it really pumped me up. No, no, it doesn't depend there. It is because of the, sal- of the saving power of the gospel of Jesus. He went on his way rejoicing even though he didn't see Philip around him. Wow, what a sight to see. It was so awesome. Praise God. Then Philip, however, appeared in Azotus and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he, re- he reached Caesarea. Also still part of Israel. Then after that, the gospel spread in Asia Minor, Gentile places, and then to Rome. It was just by divine intervention because Paul went to Rome in chains. He was imprisoned. He was a prisoner. So he used it as way of evangelization. So praise God. Jay-Z, as we conclude here, church, I know this is one of the scariest tasks for every Christian to share Jesus. If you'd be honest, I'm honest about you. Sometimes those people who are close to me, those are the people that are really, it's really hard to invite. But strangers, I could invite them. Bring me to your, to your, to your, to your neighbors, I could invite them. To your dad, your mom, I could invite them right away. Bring me to a party, I will always make sure that I'll, 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 ha- I'll look for an open door for me to inject, for me to, to, to come in and invite this person to church. I'm like a salesman, salesman of Jesus. But those people are close, who are close to me, sometimes it's hard. My neighbor. When I invite them, I, was, I invited them first with Friendship Sunday. It's so hard, it's so awkward. It's, it's, it's actually something that's like pulling me or stopping me. But come on. You have the power. I have the power of the Spirit of God in me. Is it because of laziness? It's because of or fear or doubt? I don't know what's stopping us from really sharing the gospel. I have taught you last Sunday, the other Sunday, how to share the gospel the four verses and the four points. If you would like an easier path, you could use the Roman road with this Romans 23, Romans 6, 23, and Romans 10, 9. Get that? Well, it takes you next on Monday. You memorize this and then you could share it to them. Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of, for the, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 10, 9, 10, 9, if you confess your sins, if you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. That Roman road that they say. So today, church, think of that one person, that Ethiopian eunuch. Forget about first this, God loves you tour, this massive evangelism, this mass evangelization. Let's forget that about right now. Let's think about that person. Yes, thousands of people those are important to God but that one particular person in your mind right now that person is also important to God think about that who's that come on just one person just one my friend one person not two not three not four not five just one think of that person right now remember you are called to share the gospel and let us commit this person to God right here right now let God show us open doors when we see this person when you sit with him or her at your cafeterias or maybe bus stations in front of your house or at your workplaces let us be intentional 
in looking for opportunities. What's an opportunity? Where's the opportunity here, Lord? Lord, please give me an opportunity right now. Perhaps God will allow you to sit with a very important person. Don't be afraid. If God is with you, who could be against you? Tell this person, tell him that you have a good news. You have a gospel. Or perhaps you are the one who need Jesus. Perhaps you. You're busy. You figure that you figure out everything. You thought you've arrived already. Perhaps you. You need Jesus. Before you could share Jesus to others, you have to know Jesus first. And you have to invite Jesus into your life before you can invite others to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And if, if that's your desire today, to have a personal relationship with Christ, this is the moment. This is an opportunity for you to have that relationship. And that's the will of God for each and every individual in this room. You are called. Therefore, in Romans 1.16, I would end here. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone. To everyone. And here's the caveat. Who believes first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. Salvation first was offered to the Jews because many Jews rejected it. God shared it to the Gentiles. We are the recipients of God's grace and mercy. And let's share that to others. Do not be ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. You have to believe people around us should believe that there is one God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. God, have your way right now. Let these people watching us through online or maybe people in this room right now, they still don't have that meaningful, purposeful, through relationship with you, God. Lord, we would like to solidify our relationship with you right now right here right now in Jesus name Lord have your way if that's you you we invite you right now who you, you who are watching us online pray this prayer with me pray this as if or not as if pray this as your own prayer Jesus forgive me for I am a sinner I am nothing without you. I confess all my sins. Please forgive me. I believe that you died for all my sins. And today, I'm opening my life to you. Please come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you pray that prayer earnestly, you are 
entering into a relationship or actually you've entered a relationship that cannot be broken, that cannot be separated by anything in this world. May you grow. May you continue to experience the blessing of God in your life, in your family, and around you. And let God use each and every person in this room for the evangelization of the whole world. If God is calling you to Africa, to India, to China, to South Korea, to Europe, wherever you are, wherever that is, come on, let it be the Spirit's leading, not by emotion. Thank you, God. May God bless you.